Flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You're now listening to the mind of an Antares Moon. I am the Royal Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry our God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. Now, check this out. This video right here is going to be about my motherfucker readings. Now, check this out, because I'm now continuing doing readings in this motherfucker. Now, look, check this out. Now, when it comes to your ascendant, your ascendant is going to be a big explanation of your personal life, personal interests, the things you personally went through that develop as your personality in today's time, and how it interacts with all the other energies that you have as far as your planets. Now... The sun and, and all things, how it affects your personal life and the things that you may see in your your life right now, how it's affecting your personal life. Now, the sun, the sun is going to be your actions and how you view things and how other people may view you in certain areas based upon your actions. Right. And how this could get affected by your own and other people's moon, Mercury. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, uh, uh, Ceres, Pallas, you know what I'm saying, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, now, when I get into motherfucking um, the moon, the moon is going to be your emotional state. So, how you react or respond will put you in fight or flight mode, and how you receive comfortability from the external world, and what make you feel vulnerable or not. So, what fucks with you emotionally? That's what the moon is going to be about. And you're going to start to realize some of your emotional traumas and things of that nature um, going through these energies. Now, also, we want to talk about uh, Mercury. Now, Mercury is going to be the energy of your intellect. What fucks with your thinking process? What fucks with your mind? Why you can't think clearly in certain areas? Why certain in other areas that... Your uh, thinking process may be so cloudy, it develop into you being nervous a lot or you worrying a lot. Why other people may have better sufficient thinking skills and things of that nature. Or why you may have better thinking skills than the individuals around you. Or all things that fuck up your goddamn uh, mind in some way, shape, or form. So that's going to be the context of Mercury. Right? Now, also, when we start to get into Venus. Venus is going to be your love language. So how you... Interact with love and why you've been experiencing certain love traumas or certain love successes in your life in some way, shape, or form. So, based upon your body language, oral, verbal language, you have a love language. And that's going to break down Venus and how your love language is interacting with your other planets and other people's planets and things of that nature. Due to the fact of the sun, moon, Mercury. Because, for an example, right? Let's say... We break it down your Venus, but your Venus may have a relationship that may not have a necessarily harsh angle or good angle, but just it being in a, a planet, being in a sign itself still means something. So, you know, you might have uh, Venus in Gemini, and let's say you have motherfucking Mars and God or Mercury and God damn it, um, Taurus. So it ain't no harsh angles going on. But here's the thing. Your love language may come across as you want to be communicative and you want to share ideas or sap your sexual energy. And that, that can make you look at an individual like you can appreciate them on a love matter. Now, here's the thing. Based upon your Mercury being in Taurus, right? Mercury affects your love language because a lot of times the way you convey that or communicate that may be very dry, maybe about material, maybe about structure, maybe about practicality, or just maybe about common sense, basically, to the point that it may come across to another individual like you're trying to set them straight and make them do something that they may not necessarily want to do for the sake of your security in some way. When in all actuality, to utilize your intellect and your way of conveying a message, Mercury, to help you push the message of Venus, because you know that chakra came first, so down here is further to get to that access than the closer planets that you created last when everything is in reverse, like Mercury. So for the most part, you're going to have to use Mercury to explain your love down here, and a lot of times that might block it. And just by knowing that this can help you understand where you may have made a lot of mistakes, misunderstandings, and the things that you may need to do in order to not make a mistake and get over a fear that's based upon the experience and not the alignment that you have that can actually be successful for you in some way, shape, or form. Now, Mars is going to be all about your passion, motivation, your desires. You see what I'm saying? And what made you angry and aggressive and how to and once you understand this, you will know how to not allow things to make you so angry and aggressive. And on the flip side, you'll know how to go for your passions, motivations and desires without actually without actually needing a large percentage level of validation. 
Saturn. Saturn is going to be all about how you see reality and gain structure in your life and how you organize and develop your status and how other people see you developing your status. So if you got a certain way of trying to maintain your stability in your life that other people keep throwing their two cents in in a negative way, this will tell you that energy also. Uranus is going to be all about your uniqueness, individuality, but the changes and rebellious energy you go on in your life and how you manifest that from other individuals. Right? Now, uh, Neptune going to be all about your dreams, imagination, your fantasies, and your delusions that you may not be aware of that may have manifested letdowns in your life. And you just easing, easing or sliding your way into a moment that went into your favor in some way, shape, or form. It explained those moments also. Pluto, all the situations that you have to deal with that have to do with power and control, given or taken, or the transformative circumstances that you have went through in your life. So the Pluto re the reading is going to be how all how how these transformative circumstances have got manifested based upon how they're interacting with your sun all the way down through your Vesta. Um, now, also getting into Chiron. Chiron is going to be how you develop all your misunderstandings and your mistakes in your life. Ceres is going to be about all the things that you feel like you need to take responsibility for, even the things you don't have to. But life made it seem like you did and it put esoteric pressure on you. They may not necessarily need to be in your life. And this could ease a lot of esoteric chips on your shoulder and resentment with, your, with a series reading. Now, palace is going to be based upon the energy that you are in a relationship with. So a lot of times the sign, the element and the energy that your palace is in is the element that you are in a relationship with like you're in a relationship with the universe regardless of a person place or thing and a lot of times if you're getting involved with individuals that may not match your palace energy a lot of times you will show these individuals that you're not really in a relationship or like them for them you just like them or in a relationship with them because they're supporting something that you're actually in a relationship with and it could be the element and the energy of your palace sign Juno. Juno is going to be about your energy that you can create the longevity concept behind. So something you have no problem creating longevity behind. So a lot of times longevity could be negative also because a lot of y'all spend a whole lot of time or trying to uphold or spend longevity in things that don't work. You may have Juno on the air side. You may spend longevity in gossip. You may have uh, Juno in a fire sign, you spend longevity in some type of creative attribute that don't go nowhere. You may have Juno in water, you, sp you, you have longevity in trying to connect with people, places and things and family that mean you no good. Or you may have Juno in goddamn earth, right? And you're trying to have longevity in business, structure, organizing. And it's probably the best if you have Juno on earth, but if you don't, it's a yin and yang to everything. The curse it with earth, the curse that it be where earth is, Sometimes you spend long longevity in to all work, no play in your life in some way, shape, or form. And then your whole life passed by before you realize you didn't even actually enjoy yourself or, in, or enjoy what you actually have manifested. And Vesta. Vesta is going to, the Vesta reading is basically about how you organize. So you may organize yourself in a certain way based upon whatever sign, element, and energy that Vesta is in. And But this way of organizing may not suit whatever job you're in at the moment. And this is probably why you keep getting met with resistance or having certain jobs or relationships and it not being built or balanced right due to the fact of how you organize energy Vesta and the sign is in, not being able to match the individual or the circumstance you are aligning yourself with that's needed to be organized in its way based upon the elemental energies it's mixed with. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's school, that's mixed with earth and air. So if you got Vesta in water or fire, it might be hard for you to organize and get ground basis when you're in buildings that have a lot of books or learning or communicating or practicality put to it, a.k.a. air and earth element. And the north and the south node is going to be based upon, um, you know, north node represents your spiritual growth. And the South Node represents your past and what you're bringing from a previous lifetime. And for the most part, last but not least, Lilith, your most embarrassing energies and what you refuse to experience, experience thought or feeling wise. Like boss bitch. <laughs>